Professor Peter Scharf, who hails from Brown University and uh, at present working in Hyderabad in Triple IIT. Professor Peter Scharf, who is a pet student of Professor George Cardona in Sanskrit Vyagrana and Linguistics, who studied under him in Pennsylvania University and later became a professor in Brown University and who worked throughout in, in US in several universities and also as a visiting professor and also in Indian universities. He is in our midst today to give the keynote paper, the reduplication and syllable structure in Panini and tradition. I welcome Professor Peter Sharp to this session. Let me ask you to uh, let me share my screen. Can I do that? Yeah. So reduplication and syllable structure in Pananian tradition. Yes. We'll uh, look first uh, at some reduplication basics and then focus on the term ekach and what the commentators, have, what some of the commentators have said about it. And then I'll evaluate the, what their statements have, have been and propose a conclusion. So reduplication takes place in the perfect, desiderative, intensive, class three present stems and the reduplicated aorist of which, each of which I've given an example here. Uh, from the root kur, chakara in the perfect, chakirshati in the desiderative, che kriyate in the intensive. Oh, just a moment, I'm going to uh, adapt my audio so you can hear me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. You should be able to hear me a little better now. Um, in the intensive che kriyate and several other forms. In the class three present stems, dadati, for example, and the reduplicated aorist from Kerr again, achikarat. <clears throat> so the question is what gets doubled? The first three sutras of the sixth adhyaya state Ekacho dwe pratamasya, doubling generally takes place of the first syllable, and the examples given in the Kashika are shown here Jajagara, Papacha, Iyaya, and Ara. So the first is an example of a root with two syllables, Jagar, the second of a single syllable with initial and final consonants, Pach, the third and the fourth are of roots with a single vowel, e and er. This, the next sutra, Ajadya Dvitiyasya, states that for vowel initial roots, doubling applies to the second syllable. Now, of course, e and er are also vowel initial roots, but they don't have a second syllable. So they are shown under the first sutra. Uh, vowel initial roots are these desiderative forms. The root here is atisa. <clears throat> the uh, original root is ut, and uh, the desiderative of it adds the suffix sun with the initial augment e to give you atisa. So the second syllable is t consisting of the original root, uh, final consonant ta, and the e augment of the sun suffix. The third rule states an exception to the second rule, na nandra san yoga dayaha. The sounds na, da, and ra, initial in a consonant cluster in the second syllable are not reduplicated. The example shown here are undidishiti, udidishiti, and archishishiti from the roots undisa, 
Odisha and Archisa originally in the desiderative before doubling. Now, uh, some terms are, are used in the discussion of these reduplicate roots. Uh, Purvo abhyasaha, the first of the doubled syllables is termed abhyasa, and the second, ubhe abhyastam, the unit consisting of the doubled pair of syllables is termed abhyasta. The rules that provide the reduplication in, in which the first three sutras are taken to recur are the eighth through eleventh, liti dhator anabhyasasya for the perfect, sanyangoho for the desiderative and intensive, shlau for the reduplicated present stems, present roots, class two roots, class three roots, and chungi for the reduplicated aorist. The reduplication in the perfect is described by this sutra. Reduplication occurs of the first or second syllable, depending upon whether the root begins with a consonant or vowel respectively, of a root that does not have a reduplicate syllable, anabhyasasya, before the perfect terminations that replace lit. <clears throat> and in the desiderative sanyangoho, the same uh, conditions uh, apply, shown in gray here. And the additional condition is mentioned if the root ends in the desiderative root forming affix sun or the intensive root forming affix young. And here, this is taken to be a genitive, not a, not a locative dual, because the E augment is part of the affix sun and has to be included in the syllable that gets reduplicated. In class three roots, uh, Schlau uh, provides the reduplication with the same conditions shown in gray before the zero suffix Schlu of class three roots. And Chungi before the reduplicated aorist affix Chung. Now let's look at the term ekach. Ekashika states that the compound is a uh, bahuvrihi compound. Ekachaha iti bahuvrihi nideshaha ekoch yasyasa ayam ekach iti avayavena vigraha tatra samudayaha samasarthaha. A segment of sounds consisting of both consonants and vowels that contains a single vowel is a syllable, not just the vowel, not just one vowel. Now, the question is which consonants are included? Does the syllable include the consonants that precede the single vowel? as shown in red in putch, follow the single vowel, that is just the ch in putch, or both, that is the entire syllable putch with preceding and following consonants. And does the syllable include all of them? That is, if there's more than one initial in a conjunct consonant in the root, does it in include both consonants? If more than one, consonant follows, does it include both? Or just the immediately contiguous one as shown in the last line here in red. Now, the commentators say that it includes all of the consonants that precede and all of the consonants that follow. So in putch, uh, pa, uch, and puch are all ekaches. They all contain one syllable and are samudayas that include a consonant as well. But the commentators argue that puch is reduplicated. So uh, in this passage, he states, thus in puch, with which vowel there is a whole ekach, with that same vowel, there are ekaches that are parts of that 
namely ach and pa. Evam cha pachiti atra yeneva cha samudaya ekach teneva tadavayava ach shabda ha pachabda, pashabdascha. Among these, tatra, the separate ekaches that are parts of that whole are not reduplicated. Pratagavayave avayave ekach nadviruchite. The separate ekaches of, that are parts of the whole are not reduplicated, rather, the whole ekaches. Kintarhi samudaye ekacheva. Jinindra Budi, in his commentary here, specifies the precise segment that is to be reduplicated in each of the four perfect active third person singular examples given in the Kashika. Jajagara, Jag in the root Jagar, Papacha, Pach in the root Pach, Iyaya, E in the root E, and Ur in the root Ur to go in the form Ara. Now, Jinandra Bodhi gives an argument in favor of his uh, determination of the determination of the Kashika, that the initial and final consonants are included. Faults would occur if just one of the A Kachas that are parts of the whole root constituted the syllable to be reduplicated. In the root Pach, if just the second partial A Kach, Uch, were reduplicated, the perfect active third person singular papacha would not result because the initial pa would not get doubled. As he says, eva mapi yada pacher achabdasya dvirvachanam syat tada papacha iti eva madi nasidhyet. No problem would occur in this route if the first partial, first partial ekach pa were reduplicated. He continues, if just the first partial ekach ni were reduplicated, the term abhyasta would refer just to this, the segment consisting of the doubled syllable ni ni, but would exclude the final ja of the root. This final ja would therefore intervene between the abhyasta and the third person plural verbal terminations of the present and imperfect and the in the present active participle and the present active participle affix due to this intervention faults would arise in the derivation of these forms so in the present of nij 714 adabiastat provides replacement of the j of the present active third person plural termination g with ut after an abhyasta. The rule would not apply if the uh, ja did not immediately follow the abhyasta. And so instead, the general rule, jontaha, would apply and replace the uh, ja with unt instead of ut. The result would be erroneous ne nijanti instead of the correct ne nijiti for the third person plural. In the imperfect, sijabhyasta vidibhyascha, and uh, re what recurs in this rule is jerjus, provides the replacement of the termination g with us after an abhyasta, again, immediately following the abhyasta. This rule would not apply because uh, the uh, j would intervene between the abhyasta and the uh, g. So the result would be the erroneous anenijan because itashchad would delete the final e and then replace the uh, ja with unt by 713. And then Sanyoga Antasyalopaha would delete the final t. There are other many other rules that apply, of course, in the derivation as well, but these are the relevant ones.
So we would fail to get the correct form, ni ni juhu. And in the present active participle of nij, ugida cham sarvanamastane dhatoho provides the augment num after the vowel of the affix shatr, final in a present active participle stem before a sarvanamastana nominal termination, as well as elsewhere that's relevant, is, is this. Nabhyastat shatuhu negates this provision after an abhyasta. Again, it is assumed it has to be immediately following the abhyasta. The rule would not apply if the J intervened between the abhyasta and ni ni. The result would be the erroneous neni jan in the masculine nominative singular after the num augment by 7170 applied and we delete the final T by Sanyogantasyalopaha. So the correct neni jat without the penultimate N and with preservation of the T of shatar uh, would not occur. And Jinendra's Buddhist argument is shown here in detail, uh, which I won't read through uh, for sake of time. And Jinendra Buddhi therefore in concludes tasmad ayuktam avayavanam dvirvachanam ataha samudaya eva dvirvaktavyaha. Therefore, reduplication of the parts is inappropriate, hence, just the whole should be reduplicated. Now, Jinindra Bhuti considers an objection. The second syllable, the objector says, would not include its leading consonants because they were included in the first syllable as its trailing consonants. That is, if a syllable includes all the preceding and following consonants, then the second syllable of the root can't include the following, the consonants that followed the first syllable because they were already included in the first syllable. So they can't be included as the initial parts of the second syllable. Yadi tarhi pratamasya ekacha dvirvachanam anena badite vyanjana siapi pratama dvirvachana sambandhina dvirvachanam badhyeta Jinjaburi then answers the objection. The explicit negation of the reduplication of na, da, and ra in the second syllable by the third sutra of the sixth adhyaya indicates that the leading consonant should be included anyway, even though they're mentioned twice as belonging to the first syllable and the second syllable. <clears throat> Naisha dosha. Yadayam nandraha sanyoga dayaha iti pratishedam shasti tadnya payati vyanjanas yadvir vachanin nivrittir nabhavati iti anyatahi nadaranam dvir vachana pratishedo anartha kasyat praptiyam bhavat. If you included the uh, syllables, the, the na, da, and ra, in the first syllable and not in the second syllable, then uh, there would be no need to state this exception because when the second syllable got doubled, the nandraha would not get doubled anyway. The syllable to be reduplicated, he concludes, therefore includes the initial sa of the desiderative root forming affix sun. So in the root, uh, yeah, in the root atisa, before reduplication, the desiderative root atisa from the base root at would include the sa, that is tis, 
And similarly in Ashisa Shis and in Arisa Nis, as he said, Atishiti, Ashishishiti, Atir Ashishcha, Sunny, Iti Kirte, Tishabdaha, Shishabdascha, Dviruchite, Arishiti, Iti, Artehe, Sun, It, Guna, Raparatwe Shukriteshu, Rishabdo, Dviruchite. So it includes the S of the sun affix. Now, in my opinion, such a solution fails to recognize the phonetic insight that Panini had in formulating 613. It indicates not that, it, that the second syllable includes all of the consonants that precede, and the first syllable includes all the consonants that follow necessarily. Of course, it has to in single syllable roots because there's only one syllable. But it indicates rather that the coda of an initial phonetic syllable is not included in the second syllable of a disyllabic root. So uh, the nandraha are the codas of the first syllable. Uh, and this is well known in phonetics. They have greater sonority than the following uh, consonant, which begins the next syllable. And uh, so the, uh, the next syllable starts with the da and the first syllable ends with the na. And similarly with r and with a double d or a double stop, the same applies. If we extend the phonetics further, then we would not include a single consonant, which is initial in a subsequent syllable in the previous syllable as its trailing consonant either. It's well known that Sanskrit has a syllabic structure that uh, includes preceding consonants. Therefore, we would exclude the sa of the desiderative root forming affix sun from the uh, second syllable. The absence of the sa in the doubled sequence in the abhyasta implies its intervention between the abhyasta and following affixes. That is, we would eliminate immediacy, anantarya. The importance of this issue is discussed in detail by Sharon Vandor, who's present in this meeting in a paper he has submitted in the forthcoming felicitation volume in honor of Professor Cardona. I won't go into detail into that matter, but I hope you will look forward to reading his paper where uh, uh, it has uh, important uh, implications. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bideshaw.